Monday the 31st of May, just a few days ago, marked the 250th anniversary of the beginning of the Scots College of Valladolid in Spain. The story of the college really begins in 1560 when the Scottish Parliament meeting in Edinburgh passed laws outlawing Catholicism in Scotland. The celebration of Mass was forbidden, priests were not allowed to be in the country at all, parents were banned from passing on the faith to their children. Clearly, preparing priests for the future would be extremely difficult in such a hostile environment. About the same time, the Council of Trent, convened by the Church to respond to the upheaval of the Reformation, decreed that there should be specialised institutes established for the proper training of priests. These, strangely, had not existed before. There had been no standardised formation of the clergy. This was considered one of the weak points contributing to the failure of the church to take part in the battle of the new ideas. The anti-Catholic penal laws made it unthinkable, at least at first, to have these institutes anywhere in Scotland. And so we look to Catholic-friendly parts of Europe to give us a home for these seminaries, as they were called. In time, Scots colleges were to be found in Rome, as well as France, Bavaria and Spain. The Spanish college was unusual in that it was founded in 1627 by a married couple, Cardinal William Semple from Loch Winnoch, who was a mercenary soldier in the armies of the King of Spain, and his Spanish wife, Doña Maria de Ledesma. Instead of payment for his services, a grateful but bankrupt nation gave him property in the centre of Madrid. It was a very large property. Here you can see a photo of it, about 1920, just before it was demolished to make way for a new prestigious boulevard in the Spanish capital. It is generally assumed that Doña Maria suggested that it could become a seminary for Scotsmen to come and prepare for the priesthood with the intention of returning to serve as priests in her husband's native land. They put the college into the care of the Jesuit order, but it served Scotland little over the next 100 years. Most who were ordained had joined the Jesuits, and only about a dozen ever set foot in Scotland, and mostly for relatively short periods, and certainly not for a lifetime of service as was hoped for. In 1734, the students were transferred to the Scots College Dowie in northeast France, and no more students came from Scotland. And 30 years later, in 1767, the Jesuit order was expelled from Spain, and the college property was given by an order of the King of Spain to the Irish, who had a college in the nearby town of Ancala de Anares. The Scottish bishops sent the Reverend John Geddes out to Spain to recover the Scots property. He was a man of outstanding patience and perseverance, negotiating the complexities of Spanish bureaucracy, unashamedly mixing with high-ranking officials to serve the ultimate goal of rescuing the Scots College Helping him was Dr. Philip Perry, rector of the English College Vandalid, which had been founded in 1589. Vandalid was considered to have a less extreme climate and a cheaper place to live than the capital. And with the English already there, it seemed a sensible place to transfer the college. By a strange twist of fate, the Scots were given an abandoned Jesuit property, the Colegio de San Ambrosio, the College of St Ambrose. After weeks of frenetic preparations, the Scots took possession of their home on the 31st of May 1771. The photo shows how the frontage of the college was quite narrow, indeed in those days even narrower, while 
The red line shows the extent of the property behind. The large church was not ours. It became the national centre of devotion to the Sacred Heart. A Jesuit student, now Blessing Bernardo de Hoyos, had received visions of the Sacred Heart in the early 1730s in some parts of the building which the Scots now occupied. Indeed, when I was shown my first room in the college, I was told it had been his room, whether you can believe that or not. The, Scot the college church is marked out in purple in this photo. It is on the right. It was already dedicated to Our Lady's Immaculate Conception a few hundred years before that doctrine was formally promulgated by the church. This photo shows the interior of the church when we used it and then how it had been changed a little um, by those who used it more recently. This is a view of what was called the Rector's Garden. And here is the cloister leading to the church. The garden is on the left. This old black and white photo shows a general view of the back of the college. Uh, you can see the cloister leading to the church which is out of view on the right. Moving to the left, the lower building above the arcade or cloister was the student's common room. And this is just another view uh, of the other side of the tower um, when you'll notice the college had been painted a different colour. Within the building, we had a small chapel known as the Reliquary. It housed a collection of relics left by the Jesuits. And of course, an important room for hungry students was the refectory, comedor in Spanish, uh, where we sat round the walls in monastic style. The food was of a very satisfactory standard. I'm glad to report. This uh, photo might give you an idea of a student's room. Basic, but comfortable, but no en suites in those days. Some rooms had sinks, but most of us had to use a communal wash place where each of us had an allotted sink, but with only a cold tap. There was one hot water tap in a corner with a jug which we queued up to use in the early morning. There were a few showers, but with limited hot water. But we were young and we, <laughs> we didn't really get too uh, worked up about that kind of thing. About 1875, two priests in the college encouraged devotion to St John Ogilvy, and one of the students painted this portrait. St John had reconciled Hugh Semple to the church when Hugh was a young student at Glasgow University. Hugh was a nephew of Colonel William Semple. He joined the Jesuits and later became the first rector of the Scotch College, Madrid. Here is a, a formal photo of a group of students taken about 1878 the student holding the book is the future Father Alan MacDonald, the Gaelic poet and scholar. The next photo was taken of the home community in 1894 to mark a visit by the local Archbishop, Cardinal Cascajares. And finally, uh, a community photo taken in May 1971, just before the 200th anniversary of the same event that we are now marking. 
Over the two centuries, most students, but not all, have come from junior seminaries in Scotland, Scallon and the Braes of Glenlivet. The Highland Seminary on Lismore and other Highland colleges, a Hortis near in Barouri, St Mary's College Blairs, and St Vincent's Langbank.